on the podcast today, Michael E. Gerber. Michael, how are you? Well, I'm delightful. How are you, Jim? I am living the dream. Thank you so much for joining me today here on the program. Um, I'm going to start off by saying this. I do a lot of podcasts. It's really all I do. And I, I do podcasts for many different companies. I've got some of my own podcasts as well. I often ask small business owners who I'm interviewing to recommend a book for other small business owners. No joke. The number one book recommended by everybody is this little baby here. Does this look familiar? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, The E-Myth Revisited. Now, a lot of my clients are contractors, and you've written over 22 books for specific industries. It, it's, it's 34 now. 34. 34 books. I want to talk yes. a little bit about how a lot of people may already know you, but then I want to learn about what's going on with the new stuff at E-Myth. So we're going to first go back in time. Everyone who knows you knows the working on versus working in. And I want to talk a little bit about that because a lot of people are so busy working in their business all day long. They don't take time to work on their business. What does that mean? Well, it's very, very simple. Most people who own what they call a business really don't. They own a job. Um, and that job is them doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 uh, knocking their brains out every day. Here it called, here it's called, here I'm called, here I'm called to every single thing that has to be done. And they're the primary source for doing it. Well, that is the major reason that 80% of all small businesses, this gym, 80% of all small businesses fail. They go out of business. They don't stay doing it, doing it, doing it. They ultimately go out of business. And so the failure rate of small business is so tragic and so disastrous. I'm just amazed as I speak to small business owners, mid-market owners, whatever and whatever, major large companies, the failure rate of business is absolutely stunning. And it's stunning because it doesn't have to be that way. And so the work that I've been doing and the reason most people tell you that the E-Myth Revisited is the book that has moved them the most is because the Wall Street Journal also calls my work the most transformational, most important book ever written for business. You hear me? Ever written for business. Isn't that astonishing? It is astonishing. And I've never asked you this question before, and I've never heard you respond to anyone if they did ask you this question. And the question is, is how did you come up with this? If you're the, the, the mastermind behind this, the leader, what research did you do? What experience did you go through to be able to put this together for all of us? Well, I, I have to say this to you. I was never interested in business. Um, one day, my brother-in-law, um, my brother-in-law's name is Ace Remus. Uh, Ace Remus came to me and asked me to do a favor for him. Mm -hmm. Ace owned a small advertising agency in Silicon Valley. And he said, Michael, I got a problem. And the problem is the advertising I do for my clients, mostly small businesses, um, tracks people to them. Unfortunately, they don't uh, 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 don't respond to the people who are attracted to them effectively. So I'd like you to meet with one of my clients. His name is Bob. And I'd like you to figure out what their problem is because they're just not selling the business they get. Mm -hmm. And I said, Ace, I don't know anything about business. Why do you want me to do that? He said, Michael, you know more about business than you think you do. So just trust me in this. Just meet with Bob and see what happens. He said, I'll drop you off and then I'll pick you up an hour later. And that's what he did. He dropped me off to meet with Bob. And I sit down with Bob. My assumption being that Bob started a small business. He's in Silicon Valley. 
He knows what a business is. I don't have to teach him that. He simply doesn't know how to sell. And what I came to realize is that Bob didn't know what a business was. He didn't know how to sell. Because he didn't have a selling system. Now understand what Ace knew and what I didn't think about is that I knew what a selling system was because I'd learned how to use a selling system when I was taught how to sell encyclopedias. Oh. Hear me, selling encyclopedias um, is a system. It's a script. You memorize the freaking script mm -hmm. and you deliver the freaking script like this. Not like that, but like this. Exactly like this, Gerber. Not like that. Not like anything other than that, but exactly like this. And that's what I discovered with Bob. And Bob said to me, well, can you create that system for me? I said, sure, Bob. So Ace picks me up and he said, what's happened with Bob? I said, Bob just retained me as his consultant. He said, are you kidding me? Michael, we don't know anything about business. And I said, Ace, I figured out I did. I know that selling is a system. And it became obvious to me Bob didn't know that. But not only didn't Bob know that, but Dad, Bob didn't know that management is a system. That marketing is a system. Mm. That breathing is a system. That training is a system. And I immediately came to the realization that a business is a system. And I figured out I could learn how to do that. What I learned far after that, Jim, is that nobody knows what I just said to you. And so the whole idea was to go to work on your business to invent your business development system is the crucial secret to creating a sexual, successful company. It wasn't until later that I walked into McDonald's to get a hamburger and I suddenly stopped. And I walked out of McDonald's and I looked at it. It was almost like the very first time that I ever really looked at McDonald's. And I said to myself, holy cow, Ray Kroc is it exactly what I'm talking about. He created a turnkey business system. And it was the success of that system that enabled McDonald's to become the most successful small business in the world. Think about it. Over 40,000 McDonald's worldwide. They opened over 600 new McDonald's in China last year. <laughs> it blows one's mind. Yeah. And that's when I realized that's what I knew. That's what I was going to do. And that's why I created the Michael Thomas Corporation, which was my first business development firm. Yeah. And it's so important, Michael, for everyone who's watching this, who may be entrepreneurial, may be self-employed or a very small business with one or two employees. If you want to scale and you want to become a large company, 20 million, 50, a billion dollar company, you must have systems. And I've learned this because I work with clients and I have different size clients. Some are self-employed. And some are operating 100, 200 million dollar companies. And the big guys can no longer operate it like a self employed minded person. Right. And so let me correct something you said, Jim. You said if you want to create a big business, hear me, if you want to create a successful small business, it is as true for the very first small company as the largest of large companies. And until you do it for the very first small company, you will never grow that company. Forget the word scale. You will never grow that company successfully. You'll never replicate it successfully because you re can't replicate it until it's turnkey. By turnkey, I'm referring to the business format franchise. 
because McDonald's is a turnkey system. Every single one of those stores is exactly the same as the one before it, the one after it, the one by the side of it. It doesn't make any difference. Like this, this is how we do it here. This is how we do it here every single time. That's the secret. I understand it shouldn't be a secret, but I discovered it was a secret. And that's where working on it came in. Working on it means you're not in it, doing it, doing it, doing it. You're on it, seeing how it's done and shaping it, designing it, building it, launching it to grow it. Michael, with working with so many small businesses over the decades, do you find it uh, for some small business owners difficult for them to step back and not have their fingers and everything because you can't do that any longer. You're going to have to have systems in place and management that manages those. But a lot of people start off doing everything. Do you find it difficult for some of these people to step back? Oh, it's the most difficult thing in the world. Absolutely. Um, I met with a, one of my mentees this morning um, and I won't give you his name because he'll immediately recognize it as will his friends. But the most difficult thing he has to do is to stop doing, 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 doing what he's doing, being called here, being called there. His life leads him. He's not mm -hmm. leading his life. Get that. His life leads him. He's not leading his life. So the very first thing I need to do with him, it needs to do with him, is to lead his life rather than being led by it. But Michael, no one can do it as well as me as the business owner. No one knows everything. I've got to do it because everyone else will screw it up. You've heard that one before, haven't you? Oh, every time, every single time. And it's true. You understand it's true at the very beginning. He doesn't know how to do it any other way. And so he has to go through a process of practicing how to do it another way. And that's why this new company I'm creating, hear me, I just celebrated my 87th birthday. And what I'm saying, I'm starting a new company. And that co the new company is Gerber Works. And Gerber Works is in the business of transforming the state of business coaching, business consulting, business success worldwide. And in the process of doing that, transforming the state of entrepreneurship worldwide. And in the process of doing that, transforming the state of economic development worldwide. And that's what I intend to do between now, my 87th birthday, and my 97th birthday. And I know you'll be successful. I've been following you for decades. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for that. What, what made you do this at this stage of your life? Because many people your age are sitting on the beach. Maybe they're in a retirement home, right? I mean, what? <laughs> what? God forbid. <laughs> well, you know, I mean. You know, you, you're 87, right? So this, this is great. I love the fact that you're still working and that you're helping others who are substantially younger than you still grow their businesses. Um, I know you have a lot of people who follow you. So a lot of people are going to want to jump on this. What made you decide to do this at this stage? Well, hear me. You said something a little earlier. I'm going to alter it. You said working. Um, it's not working, it's creating. So hear me, I'm 87. Born in the image of God, it says that in Genesis. Born to create. If I'm born in the image of God, if you're born in the image of God, if all mankind is born in the image of God, as it says uh, we are, then the third single step is born to create a world fit for God. So born to create yeah, born in the image of God, mm -hmm. born to create a world fit for God. So I'll never stop creating. Yeah. Um, creation is what I do. Creation is who I am. Creation is who we all are. 
once we understand it, I'm not born to work. Everybody works, work, 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 doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. I, no, it's not work. This is not work for me. It's life for me. It's it. It's your life. It's creating. And let's talk a little bit about work, because many people call what they do for a living, whether they're a W-2 employee or they have a business, they say, I'm going to work. For me, I don't like that term because work means you have to exert energy. That's what it actually means. For some people, though, they actually go to play. They go to do what they love doing. Do you think that people who actually are working, grinding it out every day are going to last or are they going to burn out? Well, they all burn out. Everybody burns out. Everybody burns out unless, in fact, they're living the life they were meant to live. And the life we were meant to live, presuming that we were born in the image of God, presuming that if we were born in the image of God, we were born to create. Presuming then that if we were born to create, we were born to create a world fit for God, then we're not going to work to work. We're going to work to create. But that takes an enormous amount of energy too. It takes even more energy of a different kind of energy than the kind of energy we spend in quotes working it's an infusion of joy. It's an infusion of life. It's an infusion of spirit. It's an infusion of soul. It's an infusion of imagination. It's an infusion of joy. It's something completely different than the ordinary sense of work, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it to create a living. Hear me, we were born alive. We don't have to create a living. We were born alive. All we have to do is discover how to live it, not to produce the income to live it. The income arrives as we create. It's an extraordinary thing for people to learn. And as they learn it, something happens to them, Jim, that's just stunning, absolutely stunning. Yeah, and I am. Yeah. And I envy you because you get to transform people. But I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever worked with a client or spoken to someone where you know they need to go get a job because they're killing themselves? They're making less money running of their course. little business. But have you ever said, hey, go get a job? All the time. Okay. Yeah, all the time. Um, in, in short, I quit. <laughs> Some people short, just don't quit. Some people just don't get it. They they well, can't they can't get there. They get it momentarily, but they can't keep it. Mm. Um, somebody reads my book and said I'm going to do that, and then they don't. Uh, Penn Goodrich, uh, my co-author of the Emith HVAC contractor of Gettle, yeah, was failing um, in his business, and somebody gave him my book, The Emith Revisited. Uh, he doesn't read business books. Um, he read that book and he said, holy shit. And he said, I'm going to do that. He read my book, The e -Myth Revisited, 39 times. Wow. Because he couldn't remember it. He couldn't remember it. He couldn't remember it. He couldn't remember it. And he knew he had to. He knew he had to. So his will to do it overcame his passivity in implementing it. And that is such an extraordinary quality that Ken had. Because the one thing he could remember is I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to, because I can't continue to do what I was doing because I was failing. And the IRS confirmed that. When they showed Ken he hadn't paid his taxes. taxes. And he didn't know anything about taxes when he went into business. So he knew he had to do this. 39 times, Ken said. He read the E-Myth Revisited from the front to the back. 39 times. Get it. His company now, this year, is a bit over $150 million in revenue. Starting out from Zilch.
Yeah. It's an amazing story. I know Ken and it's a, uh, it's an amazing story. Do you find that most small business owners get in their own way? Of course you do. What of course they do? do. Just like I've said, just like I said, because they're technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. They go out on their own to create their own business to do it, to it, do it, do it. And they do it all wrong. They haven't a clue how to do it. Nobody who starts their own business has a clue how to do it. But I can say the same thing for people who are parents or people who get married. They've never married, never been married. They get married, never had kids, had kids, but everyone seems to survive. That's not true of a small business though, right? <laughs> me, everybody doesn't survive marriage. Oh. 50% oh, of marriages fail. That's true. Everybody doesn't survive as a parent. Most parents fail. Mm. Everybody doesn't survive as a kid. Most kids fail. So the reality of life is everybody fails. They don't know how to do it. Nobody taught them how to do it. Your parents didn't teach you how to be a parent. Your father didn't teach you how to be a father. Your mother didn't teach you how to, you understand? Nobody teaches us how to do it because they don't know how to do it because their parents didn't teach them how to do it because their school didn't teach them how to do it because their college didn't teach them how to do it. It's a disaster, Jim. Yeah. It's an absolute disaster. So somebody had to. And that's what we're doing. So how can people engage with you on your new venture? Very, very simple. It's really, really simple. Email me. Michael at MichaelEGerber.com. Email me. Michael at MichaelEGerber.com. Now, don't forget it. It's Michael at MichaelEGerber.com. And I'll tell them exactly what to do. Now, I say I, not I. It will tell them exactly what to do. It's really simple. Everybody can do it. Everybody can afford it. But it's going to require discipline. Mm. I like to say, if you've got the will, we've got the way. If you've got the will, we've got the way. But if you don't have the will, it doesn't matter what the way is because you're not going to do it. So if you've got the will, meaning if you've made up your mind, like Ken Goodrich did, if you make up your mind, how I am isn't working. So I've got to discover a new way to work. I've got to discover a new way to do it. I've got to discover a new way to live. Then I can have an impact on every person you send my way, Jim, beyond belief. Beyond belief. And I know that because I've been doing this for 50 years. Michael, over the decades, as I've matured through life, I've realized that most of us who have half a brain can do almost anything. So, so many people say, I can't lose weight. I can't start a business. Right. I right. can't, I can't, I can't. And then we'll see an amazing story on the news where someone had an accident, maybe it was someone in the military, a veteran, and they lost their legs. They're on a basketball court playing wheelchair basketball. And I have two legs and two arms and they can beat me. Well, wait a second. And they never played basketball before the accident Be because they had such will, right? They're like, I can yeah. do this. I will do it. Do you believe that people who either come from a lesser background or some adversity in life actually can become more successful in business because they really have something to prove? Anybody can. Anybody can, provided they do it the right way. If they don't do it the right way, they will never succeed at it. And so the whole idea is not to be Michael doing it, doing it, doing it, teaching you, teaching them. It's creating a turnkey system for doing it. Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, was 52 years of age when he founded McDonald's. Now think about that. He was 52 yeah. years old when he founded McDonald's and he didn't create McDonald's. He acquired the rights to McDonald's from the McDonald brothers. Yep. So Ray Kroc didn't create McDonald's. Mm -hmm. He acquired the rights to McDonald's and he started out his first 
hamburger stand in Des Plaines, Illinois. And what Ray Kroc did is he went to work on that hamburger stand to get it absolutely perfectly right, to create what he called his business format franchise. Perfect the franchise so we could replicate the franchise. Perfect it so you can replicate it. Perfect it so you can replicate it. It's magical, Jim. It's just absolutely exquisitely magical. It is. And I'll tell everybody who's watching and listening to this, you don't have to go this alone. Michael Gerber can help you with this. So I'm going to have all of his contact information in the show notes. And beyond that, there are so many other people that you can talk to who've done it. Find a mentor, find someone who's done it. It it's it it sometimes goes against what we believe as humans. And and we're we're our own worst enemies sometimes. I remember when I told my wife. Here's a quick story. This was 20 years ago, exactly 20 years ago, 2003. I was working, making a great income. I was living the dream, had a BMW. I had a six bedroom house on a cul-de-sac, a pool, a tennis court, living, you know, living great. But I wanted to become an entrepreneur. I was a misfit in the corporate world. I came home, my wife, who was pregnant, holding our two-year-old son right there in the living room. And I said, I want to quit my job. OK. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand. She's pregnant. And and, you know, I want to quit my job. And, you know, it's just it's it's it, you know, it's just amazing what we can do. And I, you know, I learned so much from so many other people to have the courage to do that. And I tell people you really, really need to do it. You know, anyone can do it and you have to stay focused. And like I said, Michael's information is in here. I want you to reach out to him. Did you quit your job? Oh, yeah. No, I quit my job. I quit my How job. I quit my job cold you... turkey. How did you do it? How did I do it? Well, there was a system. So actually, I I actually had goals that were short term. On, on basically marketing my house and so forth. Like you, I moved to Katy, Texas. <laughs> I did the same thing you did 20 years ago because we had family there as well, my wife's family. But how did I do it? I basically yes. um, got the courage to do it. I went into my boss's boss's office and I resigned. I'm not really sure what you're looking for for an answer here, Michael. I mean, I, I, I resigned and I didn't know what I was going to do. But I did know that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and I did know I needed to understand how to be a business owner. People like Zig Ziglar helped me out. I listened to his tapes, found your book, The E-Myth, Michael Lee Gerber, and, and Robert Kiyosaki, and all these different people. And I'm telling you, all of you told me to quit my job and start a business. <laughs> it's, no, it's really true. And no, I got and, it. I got it. Yeah. And, and I've actually told that story about Zig Ziglar told me in my car, driving home, quit your job, quit your job. It's not what Zig was saying. And I've said this on stage at Howard Partridge's Inner Circle event. And it's true. I That's all I heard is you don't belong here. You belong here. But I don't know if everyone is cut out for that. Well, everybody is if, if, if it's true, what Genesis says, that we're born in the image of God which means we're born to create, which means we're born to create a world fit for God. If what I just said to you is true, then everybody is fit for that. Once they come to the realization of that, but they have to come to the realization of that. You did. You came to the realization of that. I want to be an entrepreneur. You surrounded yourself with creative influences influencers who kept on saying it to you, saying it to you, saying it. And there was a part of you that responded enthusiastically to that and to the point where you had the guts to do it. And you woke up and said, honey, I'm going to quit my job and become an entrepreneur. And she said, honey, you're going to do what? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I'm going to do that. Listen to Zig Ziglar. Listen to Howard Partridge. Read Michael Gerber. They're all saying the same thing differently. Yes. I'm going to yes. do that. And she said, well, honey, if you're going to do that, 
God be with you. And you said, well, God will be with me because I was born in the image of God and I'm born to create and I'm going to create a world fit for God. And that's what you went out to do. And it was quite a journey. And I, I will say this to anyone who's thinking of leaving their safe corporate job. If you really want to do it, go out on your own because it's actually a little bit safer in my opinion. I saw my father get laid off at 50. I've seen a lot of people in their 50s. That seems to be the magic number that the corporate world wants to have you exit. And it happened. So I laid myself off at 36. I saw what I told people. I said, I'm laying myself off. Perfectly good job. Six figure income job. Like I told you, BMW, the driveway, uh, you know, beautiful bride, uh, one child, one on the way, swimming pool, tennis court, the whole thing. And people are like, are you crazy? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm following my dream. I'm going to figure this thing out. And I never have looked back. I've kind of looked back, but I didn't want to go back. And I will tell you this. Every job I had no longer exists in those companies. And most of those companies no longer exist. And, and, and I want everybody to contact Michael and have him show you the path just because we want to become an entrepreneur doesn't mean we know everything. I didn't know everything. I knew enough that I may have been a little crazy, but I knew, I knew enough that, that I was going to make it work. But you really need a team, and it would be great to engage with someone who knows so much. I, this book, look at this book, Michael. This is old. The pages are yellowed. I've read it a number of times. And buy the book, but I'm telling you, connect with Michael. All his, all his information is in the show notes. Jim, I'm going to say one thing to you, and I want you to hear it not as a criticism but as an, a, an alternative way of speaking. Sure. You said I followed the dream, um, presumably the dream to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm saying that's not the dream. That's simply a means to the realization of a dream. And I'm suggesting the dream is the great result you are here to produce. So I understand Ray Kroc produced a company that is the most successful company of its kind in the world, in the history of the world, McDonald's. He didn't create McDonald's because he wanted to become an entrepreneur. He created McDonald's to transform the state of small business worldwide. Think about that for a moment. And then realize that your dream is not a personal dream. It's an impersonal dream. It's not about me. It's not about what I'm going to become. It's about what I'm going to create. And so the alternative dream to what I want to become is I want to create what? My dream in 1977, my God, it's not a long time ago, was to transform the state of small business worldwide. That was the beginning of the E-Myth. It wasn't called the E-Myth. It was called the Michael Thomas Corporation. But my dream wasn't to start a small business. My dream was to transform the state of small business worldwide. My vision was to invent the McDonald's of small business development services. My dream, my vision, my purpose, my mission. When you follow that, and you can follow that in my book, Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. Are you familiar with that book? I am. Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. You read that book again, you'll get it. Now, you're a young man. How old are you now? <laughs> you are so kind. It's all relative, I will tell you. I'm 57. How old? 57. Yeah, I'm 37 years older than you. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, so, so hear me, you're a young man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, read that book, read that book, and you'll suddenly come face to face with something you said to your wife all those years ago, 
I'm going to quit my business, this business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create a new one. Yeah. So in this context, what you do currently is what I call old co, O-L-D-C-O. And the company we're going to create together is called new co, N-E-W-C-O. And the company called new co is not necessarily going to have anything in common with what Jim does today. I want you to simply accept that just as I've said it. And I'm saying that to every single person who's listening to us right now. I want you to imagine that there's something in your life you haven't even begun to pursue. And it's going to blow your mind, Jim. I promise you that. So that's enough for our conversation today. Yeah. Shall we say goodbye? Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate it. Michael E. Gerber, all of his information, including most of his top selling books, will be listed in the notes of this podcast. So all of that information will be one click away and his contact information. Michael, look forward to seeing you soon, my friend. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.